sort of drink beer of the three um, beverages, uh, wine, beer, or liquor, L-I-K-K-E-R in my spelling. Um, <laughs> but another third of the people prefer wine, and then uh, about another third, well, a little bit less than a third people prefer liquor. These statistics running to Gallup, uh, Gallup 35%, 36% appear, 23% add up to 94%. I suppose then, although they don't say that the other 6% are people who drink all three. <laughs> this doesn't, this doesn't, didn't pull teetotal. Um, one, I, I thought this was, I have to read this. As a result of these distinctions of age and gender, that is to say that more, about half of males prefer beer and about half of females prefer wine, um, those statistics get skewed over in that direction, even though a third, a third, a third prefer those beverages, uh, um, more males drink beer, 50%, and more, more women drink wine, 50%. 50%. Um, because of these distinctions then in age and gender, because younger men prefer beer overwhelmingly than older men to beer, uh, to, to wine, and older women prefer wine overwhelmingly to beer than younger women do. There, there are extremely sharp differences in drink preferences between younger men and older women, which is a cougar alert. So what is happening to this is very University of Chicago. <laughs> I absolutely can't believe where, where that is. I wanted to give you, oh, here's some idea of some of the trends that are occurring, not only in business with beer, because it's actually, beer, beer sales are, are actually sliding a, a slight bit, where wine sales are coming uh, up a little bit and plateauing in our country. In other countries, like Italy, for example, beer sales are quite high versus wine sales, which are declining. The people in those countries, especially young people, are preferring to drink more beer and soda pop than they are the traditional wine in those countries. But in, in our country, uh, the, the great momentum, such as it is, is, it, is in the 20%. There were about 650 licenses last year granted to brew pub establishments being established in all sorts of parts of the country. By the way, Midwesterners prefer beer to wine uh, more than any other group in the country. Yeah. And, um, but, seven, but over 750 licenses are being granted in the year 2011 are aligned for brew pubs to be built. So brew pubs are definitely uh, a, a big movement in our country. But what are the other movements in the business of, of beer, in the evolution of the taste of beer from what we drank and to what the young people are drinking to what's actually going on in the future? Um, one, majors making minors. Um, big beer, beer companies like Coors and Einhauser Bush have little secret breweries in their, in their big facilities in Golden and in St. Louis and in other places. In Golden, it's called Adolf Coors. That's the name of the microbrewery inside the enormous buildings up, up in Golden, which I have toured from time to time in my youth. I am from Colorado. Um, I'm very proud to say I'm from Colorado. I'm a fifth generation Colorado, and we, more than any other state in the union, have more brew pubs per capita and brew, brew, the microbrew breweries per capita than any other state in the union. Yes. Um, but they're making small beer. Coors has a beer called Batch 19, which was literally Batch 19 by the Adolf Coors Mini Brewery, and it's targeted at the brew pub market. It couldn't be sold as Coors, so it's sold as Adolf Coors Batch 19. So you're going to see more majors making minors in their, in their little breweries. There's a lot more cooking with beer, cooking with beer recipes. I write for the food section, and there are more cooking with beer recipes than there used to be ever before, and they're, they're vying with cooking with wine recipes. Lots of different kinds of dishes, not just boeuf flamand, which is a famous Belgian dish, but, but uh, other dishes cooking with beer, and beer cocktails being made at restaurants versus just spirit cocktails or wine cocktails. There are all sorts of different beer cocktails here in Chicago as well. There's a move from uh, malt beverages being not beer, but other kinds of malt beverages. Hard, hard lemonade, um, hard colas are actually malt beverages. They're beverages like beer, but they don't come out as beer because of the way they're tinkered with during fermentation and the flavorings that are given to, given to them. Something very interesting that's been used with wines uh, for centuries now, almost millennia, um, is the, the aging of beer in wooden barrels that used to hold spirits, cognac, uh, port, sherry, bourbon barrels are very popular in our country. And um, you'll see a lot more barrel-aged microbrews. They, uh, they're, they're beers, and then all of a sudden they turn into something else because of the influence of the wood on them. The smokiness, the, 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 the coffee and toffee flavors, depending on the spirit that held them before, they donate that to the beer that's aged in them. So they turn out to be um, really different and very multi-layered flavored beers. Um, there's a movement uh, 
called nano breweries, which are uh, people like you and me who brew beer at home and either sell it or circulate it only to our friends. I was house sitting over the weekend and as I pulled up to my, my slot, number 22, I looked down the window and there was a nano brewery in this fellow's house. Tubes, it was like Ken Burns, part two, which is really great. There's all sorts of tubes and, and vats and other kinds of things. He was brewing a fair amount of beer in his home. It's impossible, I don't think it's possible, but it's probable that he doesn't drink all of that himself. <laughs> He's going to circulate a lot of that to his friends and perhaps even sell it to some. Those are nano breweries and they're more and more popular. Home brew associations are big. Sours are coming, uh, becoming a big thing. These are beers that are very traditional in Belgium. They're, they're tart, um, sour, literally, lemonade style beers. And um, they're a, a style of beer that is, that is taking hold in our country, made by Americans. Um, Local beers and restaurants are becoming more popular, not just at, at the bar, but as part of the meal, part of the, part of the, the bar service. You'll see a lot of beer lists in restaurants where you would see next to wine lists, the same sort of thing in the past. And, and um, beer uh, restaurants are fans of both beers and wines from local, um, local agencies. There are uh, more and more extreme beers being made, 27%, even 40% alcohol by volume. These beers are made um, in a barley wine style or in imperial stout styles, or in fact are sometimes tinkered with after they're made into really high alcohol beers by freezing them and then taking the alcohol away and then taking some of the ice away from them and then reconstituting and doing that in stages so that you concentrate the alcohol to really, really high percentages. And extreme beers are just like the jackass, sh the TV show. They're just for a certain segment of the population that really likes to go the distance. And, and, and because they're like that show, they won't last very long. They're just going to be a small percentage. But they're, you know, they're popular. And you have never seen more extreme beers made in any other country than in our own. And, and, uh, and small parts of, in small parts of Scotland. Lots of hybrid beers. It's true. <laughs> there, there are lots of hybrid brews. We know about them now because there's the famous pumpkin beers being You'll find all sorts of beers being made in a hybridized style, not just American Imperial IPA, which is a misnomer because it's India Pale Ale, but it's a dark ale uh, in the Imperial style made by an American. You see some hybrids like that, but you see all sorts of different kinds of beers. At the Great American Beer Festival in Denver last month, the most, pop the most popular table was Shorts Brewery, who has two beers, one called Key Lime Pie and another one called um, uh, Carrot Cake. That's the name of the beer. And they taste exactly like their sounds. And the people were fascinated to find out that a beer that's not named Mike's Hard Lemonade can actually taste like that, those things. And th those are hybridized beers. So there's peanut butter beers, there's chili beers, all sorts of different kinds of beers. Some of them work, some of them don't, obviously. Just based on your bones, you know which ones do don't work. Um, a, a neat thing that's coming in, it's new in, in a trend that's happening with the evolution of beers, is collaboration beers. Little breweries are getting together individually with themselves and making beers as a group against the big brew companies like Miller and Coors. Um, collaborate, collaborate. Nobody understands collaboration beers because it's not a good business model, but it's a very interesting phenomenon. It's a sh we'll show you, Coors, that we can cooperate with each other, share our knowledge, and make interesting small microbrews. Um, wild ales are coming on. They're a new thing in our country as well. Very popular in Belgium where wild yeasts are used to ferment the mash. Um, no added yeast is used, and so it's a question of like, let's see what happens this time in this place. And it literally, there's no guarantee anything is going to happen, but if it does happen, it happens only at the behest of wild yeast, nothing else. And it's an experiment that comes out with lots of different flavors, and that's the whole idea behind it. Um, a, a neat movement, another one that I'll just mention as, 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 in closing, is that um, people are now very, very fond of canned craft beers versus growler craft beer or bottled craft beer. Lots of people suggest that cans um, are a more proper storage for fragile, small batch beers to protect them from light and other kinds of things that bottles do not do. And so when we served, for instance, this Kronbacher, which is not a small batch beer, um, one gentleman said to me, oh, I'm so happy you've got the cans instead of the bottles because he likes the fresh flavor that's, con that's conserved by the can versus the bottle. So you, 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 you'll see in stores now and at, at restaurants and bars lots more canned, what are called canned craft. So what I want to do after I've talked too long, I did talk longer than my introduction, sorry, the, um, is to be of service to you. So I'm going to hang out, as you guys say, um, for a little bit and talk with you about anything you have in mind, any questions you have about beer that I'll be able to answer. And then if you have questions about wine as well, I'm here to be of service to you tonight because I, wanted, I, wanted to, I want to 
I want to do that. <laughs> I'm very happy to be here, and thanks for your attention. Sorry for taking more than my 15, but I'm allowed. Bye-bye. <laughs>